All right, so Estrat Bozembo is here, and I want to talk about her a bit, especially to help out those who might be on the fence in whether they want to roll for her or not. I have to say is that she is a pretty good unit. If you do want her to outscale other damage dealers in the game or scale up to like, you know, Izanami, you will need quite a bit of, you know, copies of her. But generally speaking, you are well off with her with just her on her founder. And I'm gonna make this very clear. You really don't want her without her founder. Her founder is necessary. It's not an option, it is mandatory. She simply doesn't perform well without her founder. If you're a new player, however, She's going to be very powerful as a starting character, whether you have her functor or not, because the Sakura faction have one of the best three five-star functor in the game. So if you're new, you like her, and you're thinking about, you know, rolling, it's not a really a big problem. She's good to do that, because you can always roll her functor at any time. But I'm just making it clear that she needs her functor to, you know, hit her full potential. Now, there are quite a few great things about her, and I want to point out a few of them. So let's go and take a look at that. I'm here, Admin. All right, let's go over a couple of things. We're going to look at the stats I already have, and I did make a video about how you want to roll your sigils, most effective way. You can watch that to, you know, get some details, how to make it as cheap as, you know, you can. I did do a stream, which I, how I rolled. So you can see how I roll sigils in practice. I was a bit greedy with that. So <laughs> you can ignore the super greed part, but as you can see, the method that I demonstrate in that video was very effective. You can take a look at the stream once again, but I want to talk about her and particular her team because while she might not be the strongest character in the game, you got to understand that she brings quite a lot to a team which is centered around her, Suki, and Kuni, right? Very, very potent team. So let's get straight into that. I'm not gonna talk about using her skills or anything like that because I already have a video from CNN that you can look at that, you know, get some details. There should be quite a lot of other gameplays and stuff like that. I'm just gonna talk about what we got to work with here. So the first thing we're gonna look at, and I believe this is one of the most important thing, right? Is that her team combination. Now, when she's just running with Suki, you will find that you're getting roughly the same buffs where you're getting the 12% crit rate, you're getting, you're getting the skill damage, 24% skill damage, 12 seconds, right? That is pretty great and all that. Um, Tsukiyomi will give you 15% attack up and 30% for 12 seconds. These are really, really great. And there's a key point to it. But if you run all three of them together, this becomes incredible. Like. The bonus become absolutely outrageous and they don't really need anyone else. So first thing first, the main point is you're going to get a 40% attack boost and a 30% thunder damage boost for 15 seconds. Furthermore, you're going to get an increase in your crit rate, still the 12%, but this time you're going to also get a 30% crit rate also for 15 seconds. Furthermore, you're gonna actually get a lower defense. Now, it's important to understand this is, when you're using Kuni, Kuni does not inflict armor break with her other strips. So she have elemental strips like physical fires and, and wind, but those does not apply as armor break. They apply as a specific, you know, resistance down on the enemy. However, when you do ult with Kuni here, it will apply an armor break, and this armor break is stay there for 15 seconds. If you have enough loop with them, they will be able to ultimate chain ultimate 
every 20 seconds. Frankly, they will fill up your gauge faster than you can actually use their ultimate. So that is something to keep in mind. It also includes a 30% skill damage boost and every second iteration, this 60%, you're just gonna fill up your gauge super fast. And another thing to also remember that all three of these characters are actually skiller, right? They are skiller. While, you know, Bozembo is less of a skiller because she needs to do, she has an enhanced normal attack, they are all skillers because she still uses a lot of one, two, and three, and a, quite a substantial damage comes up. I would say half and half is from normal and half. So it still counts to get a 30%, but these guys are absolutely crazy when they're teamed together. The good news is, if you already have Suki, this is great. This is great. You only need to worry about rolling for Bozembo because you can get Kuni for free from the shop. Remember that, you can get her from the shop for free. You don't need her Funker. If you wanna get her Funker, you have the resort. Sure, it will make her even better, but you can just use the Sakura Funker. Like I said, it's one of the best there is in the game for a free five-star Funker. This is a really, really big deal because these buffs are massive. These are, they don't really have a support. They don't have a dedicated support. So all of these buffs is to make up for that. The only real problem you will run in with running all three of them is that you will be running full melee. And some bosses can be a little tricky when you're running full melee, meaning they don't have any heal. They are just purely offensive character. They don't heal. The good news is all three of them do have the ability to zero time. So you want to use that to your advantage. So when I was rolling, I did go after, you know, Raptor to get, you know, dodge effects and down, you know, get that there. It's a useful thing, especially when you're running all three of them to try to, you know, get that dodge out there. Cause it's kind of really the only thing you, you really got to prevent yourself from really taking a lot of damage. You can't really get away from the enemy. You, da you know, your damage is gonna drop off of the cliff. You need to stay and you need to be super aggressive. So it's good to get some of this dodge. Once again, you do want this loop. You wanna get this loop so you can cycle. One of the interesting things you wanna do is to be able to ultimate, chain ultimate as soon as the fight begins. So these are important to make sure you get that energy up because you know what? Instead of getting some extra damage buff from here or there, it would just be a lot easier to get off your chain ultimate because of how powerful and how much damage you're gonna get from the chain ultimate. So it's not a bad thing to invest in loot box. Loot box are great, right? So we are running what is recommended, right? And we, we get our stats here. Unfortunately, it was this is pretty average. If I was really, really lucky, I could have I could have gotten like that eight, seven, you know four or five or whatever, but I did get two in Thundering, so I'm pretty okay with that. And once again, Earth Haunter is very important for her as it allows you to get a lot of divine energy when you leave your first transformation. And this comes back to do with her actual code here in which you're running blue. When you actually begins combat, you're gonna get a full gauge of divine energy that you mean you can immediately activate her skill tree to transform and you can just immediately start doing that top tier damage now this is in the code however once you burn out for the first rush right you need you need a functor now to give you back more energy to get into it again dupe is also good because this scales up the base damage of her skill one two three and base damage is very very important extremely important so if you can get duped that would be a good thing because you'll just make her one two three skills even more powerful so yeah but you it's mostly for the divine energy regeneration and the points the 40 points what you get when you enter the sakura state so you can straight up start doing the damage and once you're run out of it you can immediately exit and you can cycle through as soon as possible or warp Still in testing for me, but it's very general. But I'm now 
we can, in their full team, they can activate Armor Break. And since you're doing that team, it's a 15 seconds on Armor Break, and there's only a five seconds downtime. So once you, you ultimate chain, once this Armor Break is gonna be on the boss for 15 seconds, right? You're gonna have 15 seconds worth of Armor Break, five seconds downtime, right? And I wanna talk about a little bit about Kuni afterwards. And we are running ultimate chain damage with her to get a lot of chain damage because, you know, she's kind of spread out. You can also run, obviously, you can also run, you know, modifier mode damage. That's also good is another good choice. Once again, I'm still testing out which one is best, the ultimate chain damage or, you know, I, I'll probably switch to, you know, modifier mode damage but for now still in testing all of this you can take a look at this you ready these actually work i still need more testing to see if we can bring out the most damage but this is what we're working with and once again blue codes and all that and now that we finished looking down on her we take a quick look yes. so once again i'm still testing out this full team where i'm running armor break again because it's 15 percent damage not attack the straight up 15 percent damage you're gonna get out of this. And if you can get 100% uptime, it just stays there on the boss. And we are definitely running particle. We're getting the actual base level of her skill three. As you know, Tsukiyomi, most of her damage does come from her skill three. So we are running that, right? I do have level three of her synergy here. You know, she's double S, running the red code. Right now I run her on an AI companion because I don't want to play her because the enemies are too aggressive so you get more ag aggro as you already know when you're actually controlling the character and it will make it very hard a lot of times depends on the fight anyways to actually execute her so the ai is pretty good especially with her synergy because it's able to generate enough energy compared to before so the ai does pretty well but you know what here we go so we're running yellow. We're not gonna come back here, okay? Well, well, now, she is not fully built. When I, She's the character that I initially built right off the bat when I actually got her. I got her, well, the same day as this video, I got her to double S, but I bought her from the shop. I have a lot of resource, so I got her to double S now. And I, in, I don't have her synergy yet, right? I need to clear some story and stuff like that, but I'm gonna go in there and as you can see, I am still running this. Remember, she is a skiller and an ultimate, and you're getting these bonus on skill and ultimate. That's crit rate and crit damage. You can take advantage of that. This is the recommended, right? Once again, not other. Also, the skill levels are kind of garbage right now. I intend to fix this. She doesn't have any loop. So I need to get the loops up to get that initial ultimate going as soon as possible because it's so huge doesn't have the warp. The only thing I got is on Flutter, which is the big thing. And then I got active this year. She has some work to do. I haven't been using her. And this is the reason why she is not fully built. Running yellow. And we are running these. We're still testing out these ones. I'll get back to that. But this is what I'm actually using. What really matters is to get off this as soon as the fight starts. As soon as you can get this executed when the fight off starts is going to be a really big deal. Take a look at her synergy real quick. So, one thing I didn't actually notice, chat was like, hey man, you know, this has happened. So this is crazy. Since on ultimate, she's able to armor break. This should allow her to keep up armor break 100% of the time. She's getting a nine seconds of time and you're getting a basic defense down, right? 10%. So you're gonna get a 21% defense down. You get a three stacks. This is really, really cool, right? I obviously, I don't have this yet. I haven't put them to the test, but just having the extra armor break here is really good. So it shouldn't be too hard to have 100% uptime with armor break. That means it would be a good option to have both Suki and Bozembo running armor break. Armor break is fantastic. There's a lot of good things in here. I haven't tested them yet, right? And this is even even better. No longer expend your mantra, right? This is really fantastic. I am gonna build her once I play through the story and do all that stuff. I have the resource already, so it's not too much of a problem. And we'll get her there. We'll do her from her there. But 
as a full team, as a full team, they are fantastic. The only issue is they're all melee. And I do recommend to build dodge. So if you're getting those things, what gives you lower cooldown and your zero time or make you generate more, I do recommend those because certain fights are gonna be very, 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 very trying since you don't have any range because boss likes to sometimes select its cycles through their target and they'll move towards various targets. And so when you have a range, they turn to one of the range and then they try to move towards the range and they turn their back to you. And, and that allows you to just constantly do crazy damage without worrying about them really striking you. And you don't have that actually, you know, to worry about anything. But yeah, this is it. That's what I want to talk about with her there. And I'm going to do a quick demo off the team, so uh, here we go. Fantastic Sakura Thunder team. We go straight into combat. We draw a blade, kill, and hands three. Get rid of them trash. Abba Tempo is a great a trash annihilator, right? S, S is just really good. She's a really good character. Yeah, and we're going to wait. The boss going to come up. Get over here. Get over here. Okay, right, reset my position. We're just gonna break draw immediately. We're gonna build back. So see how quickly without our functor. And then there we go. We're gonna get that. And we immediately go in. Oh. This. So we go back. In again. There we go. We're done. We won. Did I perform my very best? Look at some number. 44 seconds. We can improve on this. You know, <laughs> Bazembo really did well because Suki didn't get to actually hit enough en enemies to generate enough energy to do her skill three. So that's why her damage is there. Remember, most of her damage comes from her skill three, and there was the fight was too short. Or generally speaking, she didn't really get to hit enough trash mob because you know Bazembo is really good at like murdering trash mob. So unfortunately, she deprived Suki of you know the ability to generate enough energy and the AI. Currently, as she's set, she won't like execute until she have over 80 energy to get as much damage out of her skill three as possible. So this is very good. On longer fight, Suki will outscale Bozembo, especially that Bozembo is from my Bozembo is only, you know, a single S, if not double S. Unfortunately, I haven't been too good with my rolls, but yeah, it's really good results. Unfortunately, this content is not hard enough to really demonstrate how much damage they will produce in the long run, but expect this to scale up because they barely had any time in the fight once they chain ultimate, and like I said, all of those buff kicks in and the fight was over before, you know, it could really. So a lot of this damage came from killing the trash mobs and not from hitting the ball. So expect really good results. If you were a good player, you're good at dodging and stuff like that, you're going to be perfectly fine. If not so much, you know, remember, try to invest in the, the dodge, but don't over invest in it because you want that offensive stats. All right, we are back from that. Now that was quite a bit of talking. Hopefully this will help you choose whether you're gonna roll or not. Probably help you with some of your build and your choice, but it's not too expensive. If you already have Suki, then you only have to roll Bazembo and Kuni is free, right? So it's not really too much is asking for. They are a good Thunder team. And remember, you are gonna need to build these Generally, mono team. Don't worry about it. You know, Kuni is not thunder, but you know, the chain ultimate and the buffs that she brings and all that strip, she makes up for that, even though she's not actually, you know, a thunder. Because of all of that goodness, they are a wonderful team. They really work. And I would say that if you like this character and you have the roles you want it, I say, yeah, go for it. Don't overdo it though, because we should have either. Ji Ming's, and if they slide Ji Ming in here, or I don't know if they will, but Sekhmet and Thoth might be coming up very soon, and you don't want to miss 
out. So if you can only afford to get her, because she's a limited, you get her and um, get one copy. And you can just, you know, we don't know when there's going to be a, re a rerun of her, but put her on the side. But you want to get a copy of her because once three point hole come, you're going to need that thunder damage for a lot of the iteration check challenges. So do do recommend doing that if you can afford it. If you're a whale, go crazy, you know, nothing's stopping you. Don't let me stop you, just go crazy, okay? But anyways, that's it for me. And drop me a like, a dislike, and if you're not sub, drop me a sub. It really helps out with the channel. So yeah, help me out. Anyways, that is for me. I will see you guys in another one.